Hi, I'm Ben Marriott. I'm a motion designer. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to quickly and easily adjust your white balances and change the color of your footage all inside Premiere Pro. Adjusting the colors of your footage is called adding a color grade. It's used to make your footage look the best it can be and make it more cinematic. It can even change the whole mood of your footage, which helps you tell a story. And it's also the last step normally in a video production process, which can really just be the cherry on top and make your footage look really professional. When working with color, it's best to work in the color workspace. So let's select that up here. This gives us the Lumetri color palette over here on the right, and it's organized into six sections. We have basic correction, creative, curves, color wheels and match, HSL secondary, and vignette. Let's select our first clip and then open up basic correction. Here we have options to make adjustments to the overall color of the clip. Changing the white balance is one of the easiest things to do. Here we can see our footage looks like it's tinted a bit green. This might be because of our camera settings, or maybe we're getting a lot of reflected light off the forest, but that is easy to change. With the white balance selector, we can simply click on this eyedrop and then eyedrop any part of our footage that we know to be white. Maybe it's a piece of paper or some clothing. So we know the sole of these shoes should be white on the edge. So let's eyedrop on that area. And then instantly the temperature and tint are adjusted to make it look more natural. And doesn't that look way better with just one click? Now, once you make an adjustment in the Lumetri color panel, it will add the Lumetri color effect over here in the effects control panel. Let's go on to our second clip and make some more adjustments in basic correction. We can adjust the exposure to make it brighter, increase the contrast, brighten the highlights, darken the shadows, adjust the white and black points, but there's also a very handy auto feature as well. And if we simply click that, it does a really good job of adjusting these to a handshell color in a single click. And we can click reset to see how that was before. So we can see with just one click, it already looks so much better. And of course we can increase the saturation as well. To add an overall look to our footage easily, we can do that in the creative panel down here. And we have a preview window here where we can scroll through all the different looks that we have available. Let's scroll through to find one we like. Here we have matrix green, very nice and dramatic. To apply that, we just simply need to click in this preview box and that's applied to our footage. Or if you already know the name of the look you want to apply, you can apply that by selecting it from this drop down menu. Now you can also reduce the intensity of these effects. This might be looking a bit too green for us, but we can slide down the intensity so it's a bit more subtle or slide it up if we want it even more green. And if we want to remove this look completely, we can simply select none from this drop down menu. There, I think this shirt looks better without. Now we can also make some subtle adjustment like to the image's sharpness or vibrance. And in the curves menu, we can adjust the luminosity levels of our footage or individual color channels. If you create a subtle S curve like this, we can increase the contrast of our footage and have a lot of control over how that's applied. We can also select just the red channel and we can reduce the amount of red from the overall image and make it really intense in the highlights. This is probably a little too much, but to reset a curves adjustment, all we need to do is double click inside this box. There, now these next two are some of my favorites. With the hue versus saturation curve, we have more control over the saturation of specific colors. If we wanted to make everything black and white, except for the red on your shirt, we can simply select this eyedropper, choose a nice area of red on your shirt, and it will add some control points around our red area. Now, because red is right at the edge, we can use this horizontal scroll wheel to put that more in the middle. Now we can drag the control points either side of red down and that will desaturate them. And if we do that on both sides, only the red in your shirt is remaining. There's a bit of red in this flesh tone, but if we drag this control point that's in our orange areas closer over towards our red, we'll reduce that as well. And through every frame on this clip that is applied. Let's double click to undo that. With hue versus hue, we can select and swap colors. So let's eye drop the red on his shirt again, which gives us again these control markers. And here, if we select the middle controller where our red is and drag that up, we can see that our red starts to become pink and then purple and then blue. And if we drag it lower, it becomes orange and then yellow, then green. And let's change that flannel to a nice green so he's a bit more camouflaged. This is perfect if you wanna change the color of a piece of clothing really quickly. In color wheels and match, we can make color adjustments to the shadows, the mids and the highlights. This is very easy to make the shadows just a bit cooler and maybe make the highlights a bit warmer. And of course you can toggle these effects on and off with these arrows here. So you can compare the before and after. In HSL secondary, we can make even more refined adjustments by selecting a range of colors and make nuanced adjustments to them with color correction, denoise, blur, and sharpen sliders. And in the last menu vignette, we can add a faded darker or lighter border to our footage. Typically it's darker and that will draw our eye more towards the center of the frame. With our feathering, we can adjust how gradual that vignette is. I definitely might prefer to have more feathering so our vignette becomes a lot more subtle and we can't see where the edge is. 
if you want to save your adjustments as a preset to use in other clips or other projects, we can simply click on this hamburger menu next to Lumetri Color up here and choose Save Preset. We can also export this as a .look or .cube file for use in other color grading applications. Now there are many color effects in Premiere Pro. I'm gonna show you two useful ones on another piece of footage. Let's go to our effects workspace and let's add the effect invert and apply that to this effect. Now this inverts all the colors of your footage. What's light will become dark and what's blue becomes this orange color that is at the opposite end of the color wheel. We can also choose to invert specific color channels over here in our effects panel. So we can invert just the red, just the green, or just the blue. We can also invert just the lightness or just the hue to quickly get really striking and otherworldly effects onto our footage. Let's hide that for now and add the second effect, tint. Now the tint effect lets you map the black and white values of your footage to two other colors. The default is black and white, so it becomes grayscale, but we can alter these by clicking inside these boxes and choosing some alternate colors. So let's make our blacks a dark blue and our whites maybe a purple color. You can also turn down the amount to tint as well if we don't want it to fully go all of those colors. And at 0% we see the original colors of our footage. This is a really useful effect for creating engaging backgrounds that we could maybe place text or graphics on top of and still have them legible. These effects along with Lumetri Color give you powerful ways to adjust the colors and tones of your footage using Premiere Pro. I hope you've enjoyed this video. We've learned how to quickly and easily change the white balance of your footage, how to use Lumetric Color to add a color grade, and also how to use the effects Tint and Invert to create some more wilder color changes. Please check out the rest of the videos in this series all about adding effects inside Premiere Pro.